Hi, I'm Adam Meyer of Mill City Luthery in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And in today's video, I'm going to show a certain type of binding repair. Um, this is on a Martin Acoustic. It is double bound front and back. And, uh, kind of an odd one. It has maple sides and back. And what has happened is the binding has shrunk. So right through the waist area here in one section, it has popped loose from the body. Uh, this is something to kind of keep an eye on if you have an older guitar, maybe just always go around and every now and then check, make sure that you don't have something to come loose. You don't want to catch your arm or sleeve on this and have it break out because then you have an actual break that needs to be repaired and it becomes a harder repair to do and it's really obvious that something's been done because you have seams. I'm going to show you my method on how to do this without having any type of evidence that the, the repair was done ahead of time. Now, keep in mind with all my videos, uh, I'm not doing this as a tutorial. This is promotional. If you're somebody who has an issue like this, I do not recommend you trying to do this if this is your first time. Um, it is very easy to get glue to come out. I mean, you have sanding and buffing, you can go through. Um, so do not try to mimic this. Um, this is uh, just my method. I've done it many, many, many times. And um, I'm just kind of showing that it isn't a big deal if you do notice it, but you need to take it to a professional and have a professional do it. Here's a close up of what is going on here. It is only happening in one of the corners on the guitar. When I mean corner, I mean it kind of in the waist area. See here that it is coming loose and it is shrunk enough that it does not want to push back down into the binding channel. You can see it popping up there. So this is the kind of thing that um, it, it doesn't always happen just like this where the binding shrinks. It can simply just come loose where if you maybe take your thumb and kind of check along there, see if there's anything coming loose. Um, I did check the other three corners you know, I'll flip this around just to, as an example, but you know, this is all perfectly fine here. So we only have it in the one corner, um, but who knows, maybe down the road, these other corners may end up coming loose. So just keep an eye on that. So when dealing with the binding on the guitar, there's a few different glues can use, you can use, but each type of glue is useful in a different type of situation. If I was building this guitar brand new, no finish, just building it from scratch, I would use regular binding cement and I would tape it on with the binding tape. This is a thick tape, there's a good tack on it, it's nice and strong, it fits around there. This takes some time to set up, um, but it will bind or glue, however you want to say it, um, the plastic binding to your wood really well. Now, sometimes you'll be doing a guitar that has wood binding. Of course, you would use wood glue at that time. Then there are other uh, manufacturers. Um, I think it's Taylor. They've been using some uh, different types of tight bond. Comes in the purple bottle. Um, there are some other types of types of uh, glue out there that work that will glue the plastic binding onto the wood body. There are composite guitars out there where it's a, a composite material, whether it's carbon fiber or something else. Uh, there are times where you might use epoxy or some other way to get those materials to bond because you know you have plastic and wood, well, you're not gonna use this. You, you can't glue it together and have it reliable with this. So you, you have to find the glue that's reliable. On this particular guitar, I'm not going to use the binding cement because it has shrunk. This does not set up fast enough to keep the binding in place. The binding is going to want to cool down and then pull away again and shrink up. This, with the tape, isn't going to be strong enough to keep that held in place. This particular time, I'm going to use cyanoacrylate or super glue. Um, this is from a, a luthier supply. It is not the thin stuff. Anybody, like I said, this is not promotional, not tutorial. Do not go out and just get random super glue and do this. That will be a disaster. It can run all over the place. I'm using a thicker kind of glue, very limited quantities with no squeeze out that 
nothing comes out from outside. If you have that happen, you got a lot of touch up to do it. I'm trying to avoid that. So that's just kind of the idea. Different situations call for different glues. You need to know what to use and when, and also in this situation, how much. All right, I have a close-up view here. I'm just going to show it as an example how to get this back into the binding channel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a hair dryer. I'm going to apply uh, some heat to it, not a lot. Um, once again, I, I got to keep saying this because this is a, a bit of a this repair is a mix of being real easy and real dangerous. Um, you need to use a hair dryer and cannot get too close. You're only getting this warm. Absolutely do not use a heat gun or anything excessive. You will melt things. You could start the guitar on fire. So I'm going to see um, if I can get this to show up. I may have to jump to a time lapse to show this kind of uh, stretch out and be fall back into the binding channel. Okay, as you can see here, it has, you know, maybe about 90% of the way gone right back into the, the binding channel. That's pretty good. But seeing as how we've got just a little bit of gap right there in the middle, I'm going to end up having to do this in stages. I'm going to gradually work from the outer edges and glue inwards so I can try and, you know, as this stretches back into place, I'm getting it tacked down. Um, it's loose uh, all the way out to about there. I can catch it with the tip of my fingernail. All the way to right about there. So now I'm going to tape everything off real close. And then uh, we'll get on to the gluing part of this. I have this all taped up now. So I don't get uh, any glue on either side. and put some gloves on. And I'm going to try and get some glue down. I'll go back and forth where I put a little bit of glue in. I'll use a razor blade to help kind of smooth it out in there, spread it around. And then I'll go back with uh, the hair dryer to help kind of keep this binding stretched out. If you see, it, when it cools, it wants to come back out. So we need to get this glued into place and have it stick right away. So I'll be going back and forth, putting in a little glue. Then I'll come over to this side and I'll be warming it up to kind of help keep it stretched out as I as I work here. So. Here we go. So there you have it, a relatively easy solution to probably a, a pretty common problem and most people may not even notice that it's happening. Uh, when a guitar comes in and I notice that one of these corners is coming loose, I absolutely make sure to check every corner. Uh, sometimes there might be a section that the binding hasn't shrunk and pulled away from the body yet, but the finish may have separated and I can seep some glue down to prevent that from happening in the future. Now, uh, options beyond this, if this guitar had come in for, let's say, a neck reset, the binding goes behind the neck heel. If the neck were to come off, you could, of course, remove the entire strip of binding and replace it and not have this tension here in the waist. But this guitar only came in for a setup and a couple of loose braces, and I noticed that this area was loose. So that was the practical solution. Uh, to, to this repair. Um, so if you have uh, an instrument that needs any repair, uh, my contact information is at the end of the video. Uh, please enjoy the rest of the videos that I've put on my channel, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.